Hello everyone. Welcome to the video on 30 days to GIPMAT. My name is Alpesh and I am going to help you in making a plan on what to do in the next 30 days for your GIPMAT. So first thing, let's look at what are the things that we are going to cover in this video. The first thing that we are going to look at is the previous year's test paper pattern. For any test, understanding the structure of the test is very, very important. So that's the first thing that we will do. Then we will look at how many marks I need to clear the cutoffs for this particular test and then the strategy for the various sections. So let's look at the test structure. As you can see, GIPMAT is divided into three sections. The first section is COUNT 33 questions. The next is LR 33 questions and then we have VERBAL which has 34 questions. So you can easily see I have 100 questions to be attempted in 150 minutes. That means you have on an average 1.5 minutes per question. So if you look at the other test that you are taking, on an average you normally get 45 seconds or 1 minute to solve the question. But here you are getting 1.5 minutes to solve a question. So on an average you should realize this is a test of accuracy and not a test of speed. Okay. Now for every correct answer you get plus 4 and for every wrong answer one mark will be deducted. Another important thing to be remembered here is there is no sectional time limit in this test. So you can ideally jump from any section to any section. That is nothing, that is not something that I would suggest you to do, but you can do that. Okay. And there are actually very less sectional cutoffs which colleges are taking. I will help you with that sectional cutoffs, but that is next to not having any sectional cutoffs at all. Okay. So let's look at the sectional cutoffs. Now, if you look at the sectional cutoffs for a general category student, you need to get 35 marks in count. 65 marks in DILR and 85 marks in verbal. But overall, if you check, I need 342 marks. Now, the test is of 100 questions and every question gives me 4 marks. That means the total marks that I can get is 400. So out of 400, the cutoff was 342. Okay. Again, if you look at the cutoffs, 35, 65, 85, do you realize it is very, very lesser Okay, if I want to get a 35 in count, I know there are four questions or four marks per question. I need to get nine questions right out of 33, which I'm sure you will get it. The level of this questions, be it count, be it DI, be it verbal is actually very, very easy. So I have lots of students who have come and told me that they could easily solve all the questions in the given time limit. Okay, so as I just said, this is an exam of accuracy and not speed. Make sure that you identify what are your areas of strength and keep working on those areas of strength. Then identify your weak areas also and work on your weak areas also. Maybe you will have to spend a little more time on those weak areas and try to make sure that your at least some of your weak areas become strong. As I said earlier, the target score should be 350 plus and to get a 350 plus an ideal attempt has to be 95 questions out of 100 with an accuracy of 90%. If you do that, I am sure you will land up with a score which is as close to cutoff or more than the cutoff. The QA section. If I look at the QA section, these are the various topics that you get. Okay. Again, there could be one or two questions here and there that means I can get maybe a seven or eight questions from algebra and lesser number of questions in geometry that is a possibility but more or less this has been the distribution for the last two years as far as GIPMAT is concerned. So identify the areas from where you get maximum number of questions and practice those areas first. Try to make sure that you cover variety of questions from those areas. This is the topics that you get in verbal. Okay, so there is only one RC that you get. That RC is also of approximately 100 questions and the number of questions are only four. So if you look at the other type of questions here, 
what you need to do to prepare for verbal is more of grammar and vocab make sure that you have all your grammar rules studied properly and as far as vocab is concerned you can't learn vocab in a day or two it's a continuous process hence make sure if you can learn on an average around 20 words on a daily basis i'm sure you you will be prepared for the type of questions that come at least for jipmat okay let's look at the third section which is dinlr so three sets of di came last year and it was nine questions last to last year we had 15 questions of di okay so this year there were three sets one set was a tabular data with four questions the other set was a pie diagram with three questions and the third set was again a tabular data with two questions if you look at the other type of questions you have analogy coding decoding series completion family tree and so on remember you also get verbal reasoning questions here what are the verbal reasoning questions you will get statement and conclusion statement and cause and effect syllogisms type of questions so always remember in lr the type of questions that you get are relatively easier compared to the other sections so the accuracy of this 33 questions should be much much higher than your accuracy of quant or the verbal section now let us see how do we prepare for the various sections first thing before you start preparing have a study plan ready with you because if you have a study plan ready then what will happen is you will not go wrong at any stage of your preparation you will not be confused what to do today what not to do hence having a study plan is very very important in terms of your preparation okay i wouldn't suggest you do complete count first and then start with your lr and then start with your verbal no i would suggest divide your day into either two parts or three parts okay if you are dividing it into two parts pick up two subjects count and maybe a verbal and if you are doing three parts then you should do each subject on a daily basis okay so my suggestion is either divide your day in a two or three part section go through all the topics first thing that, that's the first aim go through all the topics and revise every concept that you have learned focus on weak areas and start working on improving them because that is very very important the lesser the weaker areas the more your questions will go right solve let's say around 30 questions of count on a daily basis 35 questions of lr 40 questions of verbal this is on an average is what i'm looking out for then once you have cleared all your concepts what i am now going to do is solve benchmarking test the benchmarking test will help you so benchmarking test you will get topic wise so this benchmarking test will help you with your preparation am i very well prepared with let's say questions on directions let's say coding decoding questions and so on once you are done with benchmarking test start solving practice tests now practice as many questions as you can that means come in the practice test what you should ideally do is pick up test which has the complete lr together it has complete verbal together and so on so these are similar to sectional tests and if possible try taking them in a time limit because once you start taking test in a time limit what happens many a times is you will identify the questions that were actually easy becomes difficult in that time pressure so start taking test in time limit once you are done with that start taking jip mats so simple thing that you need to remember take a minimum of five jip mats that's a bare minimum that you need to take okay and i would suggest take this five jip mats uh, in the last 10 to 12 days with one test every alternate day this is something that you need to do you are not only supposed to take the jip mat you are also supposed to analyze them okay so once you analyze the test you will identify where have i gone wrong so you can find out what is the error that i am making and make sure that i do not repeat that error in the second test that you take so please do not take test after test take a test analyze them 
take a second test, analyze again and move on with the third and so on. Whatever is the gap between, as I said, you should be taking mocks every alternate days. So whatever is the gap between two mocks, try to analyze the test first. Once the analysis of test is done, try to utilize them in practicing more number of questions from called verbal, LR and so on. So I hope this will help you in your preparation for 30 days, last 30 days of JIPMAT. All the best for the test.